Hello, this is a quick video about the Node Wrangler, probably one of the most important add-ons you can have in Blender because it really speeds up your node editing workflow. This is all part of the Node School tutorials, which you can find on gabbit.co.uk in the beginners section. You'll find lots of free tutorials on there, taking you from beginner right through to advanced levels. You can also support me on Patreon and there's a Discord server if you get stuck with lots of helpful people on there. All the links are in the description. So first of all, you need to enable the add-on. It does come with Blender, but you do have to go up to File, User Preferences, and Add-ons. Then just type in Node, and there is the Node Wrangler. Just tick that, save the user settings, and close it down, and it's installed. So my scene is very straightforward. I have a plane and a light on it. I put the light on it so you can see the effects of the normal map when I put it on the plane. I've also got the screencast keys enabled here but I will be going through the keys as I press them. So make sure you're in the node editor, of course, down here, and this will only work in cycles. If you're using 2.8, it will work in EV as well. So at the moment I have my plane selected and I'm in rendered mode, and my plane has this principled BSDF shader on it, and it's been unwrapped. The first thing that's worth pointing out is that you can get to most of the commands with control space, and that will give you this menu, much like if you press spacebar, you get the search option with this menu. Well, control spacebar in the Node Wrangler will give you all these functions and their shortcuts. So if ever you get lost, control spacebar. This is the one I want to go through first because I think this is absolutely fantastic, which is the add principled setup. So if I click on my principled shader and press control shift T, it takes me to my files. And if you go to a folder with your PBR textures in, like I have here with this concrete pack. I think this one was downloaded from Polygon, but I have got a video which I'll put a card in the corner for lots of different texture packs that you can download. And if they're labeled correctly, the Node Wrangler will pick this up. So if I select all these now with box select and click and drag across them, click on principled texture setup, it sets it all up for me. So it's taken the names and put them in the right places. It's even noticed that this is a glossy map, not a roughness map and inverted it. The normal maps through a normal map and it's also even got the displacement map going in. And there's the result. The displacement map will only work uh, when fully rendered and my mesh has to have a lot of faces to affect it. So Control Shift T will give you that. If I undo that and press Control Shift T again and only select the color, the gloss and the normal, you can see it's just set those ones up. So again, as long as the names are set up in the correct way. So I'll just undo that and show you again. These have all got the correct naming convention I think it accepts a few, so you can get away with a fair bit. But if your texture packs aren't labeled in the right way, you need to follow these naming conventions. So I've set up my PBR texture using that system. I've taken out the displacement because I haven't gone into that in great detail. But hopefully most of you understand the idea behind the PBR setup if you're following along with my Node School tutorials. The only thing you won't recognize is the texture coordinate. I'll go through that in detail in the next episode, but it's just how the 2D maps are placed onto the object. Which brings me on to my next shortcut button. If I delete these two and delete this node link, click on a texture and press Control T, it sets up those mapping coordinates for me. You can also click on your shader and press Control T and it will come up with the image texture as well. But in this case, Control T on the texture will give us the coordinates. I'm going to get rid of those again because I'm not doing anything special with the texture coordinates. So this is what you should be used to. Now, another great function of the Node Wrangler, and probably the most important in my mind, is the fact that you can press Control Shift, left click, and it will give you the effects of that particular texture on the object. So in other words, it isolates that texture. So I can press Control Shift, left click on roughness, and it will show me the roughness map and how it's coming across. This is great for kind of problem solving and seeing how your textures are placed. Let's look at the normal map, Control Shift, left click, and there's the normal map. Also here's the roughness, but actually that is the glossy. This is the roughness because it's going through the invert node. So you can even click on nodes in the middle like color ramps and so forth, which I'll go on to later with control shift. So an extremely useful button. And you can go back to your final output just by control shift on the principled shader or the last shader that's going into your material output. So control shift left click. If I have two principled shaders, so shift D to duplicate and push this down here and I want to link them together with a mix shader, I can press alt and the right mouse button and drag them across and it creates a mix shader. 
So that's very handy as well. Alt right mouse button and click and drag. So I'll undo all those. There's also what I would call a quick connect. So I'll unconnect this. Control right mouse button and drag across your nodes. They'll connect up with the correct link. So if I unattach the color, control right mouse button, plug it in, it goes into the base color. Now I can control right mouse button again and then it will go into the subsurface color because that's the next available input. So it's quite clever really. It knows the most popular and then the secondary inputs. So as I like to call it a quick link, control right mouse button, quickly links up your nodes, saves you clicking on the node, dragging it and pulling it into the other node. Okay, that's all I want to go through for the node wrangler. Those functions are the most important to me and the ones I most use, but do remember you can press control spacebar to find out the other functions that may be useful to you. Thanks for watching.